one. It's game number three of the evening with Optimus, Tom, and Malthus X, and we got Napkins in Disguise going up against their Ancient Golem conference mates and actually tied for third place with Team To Be Determined. This is going to be quite the matchup here. So many people are playing on champions that I like. For me, Inox is one of the guys that I've always associated with top lane Aatrox. He was one of the first people that I saw actually using that uh, in, in any sort of significant competitive fashion. And then it kind of fell off and he didn't really use it for a while. So I'm glad to see him on that one again. WP Bear, he's obviously he's on Cassidy. We all know about WP Bear on Cassidy. And we're seeing Westrise on Ringar, which I think is a very, very fun champion. Uh, and, I mean, you can be not so happy about it because he's like King Counterpoint and stuff like that where he just comes out of stealth and then kills you. It's like, well, I didn't really have a chance to do a whole lot there. But, uh... I, I like the level one play coming out here for napkins in disguise. Yes, they've got the ward down in the area. They see everything that To Be Determined is doing, and they recognize that they have the opportunity to step forward here and uh, get the ward down on the blue buff safely. Yeah, so they're going to wind up warding the blue buff. TBD trades it for a ward at the enemy red buff area as Westrace uh, kind of getting his split push kind of uh, mentality on early, just standing in that top tri brush, making sure that he's finding out any sort of shenanigans that NID were trying to plan for that side of the map. Although just wards being placed down on the bottom side, however, means that Napkins in Disguise and TBD are both going to kind of be hip to some of the tricks that each other are going to be up to. But with no ward over in the dragon area of the river, Napkins in Disguise may be able to get a jump if they try to pressure the blue buff area, but seeing that there is at least four members of the side of TBD over there and only three of them, they're going to wind up backing away. It looks like they might just start off for Scuba Chris, but ooh, they're waiting in this tribal share. Arthlon going to face check it. Gets hit by there. Okay, Caitlyn there has to flash away. Quick little cue there from Robert X Lee, and they're going to wind up backing away from that one. Arthlon down below half health and no flash in that mid lane. But here's something we didn't really talk about all that much. Look at the side of Napkins in Disguise and tell me what hard CCs they have available to them. As Arthlon, he's come. Wow, this is very brave of him coming into the lane with less than half HP against the Cassidy. And W. Pooh Bear, he. This is kind of scary. But either way, they have two knockups in the form of Lugal Ultimate and Aatrox Q. And then, and then they've got the Shivana like, vacuum effect that goes on when she ults over you. And as far as hard CC goes, that's kind of it. So, I mean, generally speaking, you walk into three people as as Sivir, you're probably not walking out of that brush. But if those three people are Lulu, Caitlyn, and Shivana, you've got a pretty good shot. Yeah, and we actually had Caitlyn actually taking a shot out of the brush as well. So Arthlon didn't necessarily face check the brush as much as just realized someone was there. Enox actually hits a quick level two in the top lane, goes aggressive against Rengar, gets him down very low, but at the same time, Brunch has to flash away in bottom lane. There's that Lucian pick against the Caitlyn being super effective. First blood has been picked up right there for Robert and Bubba Dub. Green Blubber tried to hold the heal, which by the way, he's got summoner heal, guys. He tried to hold the heal until the very last moment when the ignite would be down and he would have an opportunity uh, both to, to potentially save his carry and bait the opposing bottom lane under the tower into a very bad position. If they make if they make a bad decision, if they're like, oh, he's going to live because of the heal, maybe they stick around too long and give a kill back on their own. But there just wasn't that window of opportunity. That wife steel lane super strong and Westrace flashes into the knockup. Oh, Westrace gets knocked up right there. It's Scuba Chris is the one that picks up a kill. Enox is burning down extremely low as Broken Shard tries to make motion towards his top lane area, but he's going to sustain himself up to about a bar and a half, if not two bars of HP before he even gets there. Throws out those Tormented Blades, and they're just wailing away on this top tower as quickly as possible. Flashed into the knockup, right? Like I didn't, I didn't just, I didn't see that wrong. He totally flashed, and Enox just kind of predicted the movement right there. The knockup went through at the same time as Rengar wound up flashing directly into it. So whether it was a little bit of star sense, whether it was a miss flash there from Westrise, it did wind up securing a kill for the side of NID. So after giving up first blood in the bottom side of the map, their top side of the map is definitely making up for it. Rengar is level two, Jarvan is level three, and both Shivana and Aatrox have hit level four already. Yeah, and look at this as well. Inox tripling the CS, more than tripling the CS from Westrise right now. Uh, his extremely aggressive Aatrox getting, Aatrox getting very, very paid in the early game. But at the same time, he's heading back to base because it's so early. You see, once again, they go for the gank on Arthlon. Not enough damage on that one. But he goes back to base because it's so early. He only has 800 gold. Broken Shard going to try to make something happen here. 
Uh, Bergen Shard comes in, actually winds up losing a flash burn right there by Nubby Pooh Bear. And that's what we were talking about earlier. You said, Malphus, not a lot of hard CC, especially coming out from the jungler, means that these ganks have to be properly positioned and they need to be in the course of something where knock up or CC is available. Not having any way to slow down Sivir and no way to turn back onto Jarvan means that a flash was burned in an attempt that Scuba Chris set up in that mid lane. Now, Broken Shard's being a little bit aggressive on the map, stealing away Scuba Chris's raids, and this is a little bit of a problem that we talked about during the break earlier on. Scuba Chris has been so effective on junglers like Lee Sin, his Vi, his Elise, just being able to disrupt and snowball his lanes and give assists to his team to help them further their advantage. Playing a very farm-oriented jungler like Shivana that's just going to do things later on in the game, he's very susceptible to someone who's going to be aggressive against them in the jungle just because he's not familiar with this playstyle. They see Nubby Pooh Bear burning the teleport to get himself back into the lane on this one. As Hook Ooh. lands on the brunch! Hook lands on the brunch, and that's going to be a massive amount of damage. The Whimsy goes down, but there's a body black from Bubba Dub in the front. He's not going to be able to get away from this one. Brunch goes down for a second time to Robert X Lee's Lucian. This is, this is why Thresh Lucian is so strong. Because Lucian has such a good opportunity to just get a, an insane amount of burst down. And then you utilize his mobility. And even if something happens like a Vayne Condem pushing someone else. Or a Whimsy slowing someone down enough that they get caught in a Caitlyn trap. The ability of Thresh to use the Dark Passage to reposition th that Lucian back into the middle of the fight. To allow him to continue being mobile. To allow him to continue utilizing his passive. And to allow him to continue bursting people down. It's just so incredibly powerful. And Robert X Lee... I mean, right now, Brunch and Glee Glogu have zero answers for this whatsoever. They're falling further and further behind, and this is this is an effect that's going to snowball very, very hard if Scuba Chris isn't able to get in the area. And the rough part about that is, Shivana is not a champion that's really built into making situations like that any better. No, as you can see here, shows the face of mid lane, and Arthlon just kind of runs away from that situation there. So no real pressure able to be applied by the side of Napkins in Disguise out of the jungle, whereas... On the flip side here, we talked about Enox, who took a lot of damage from that tower from West Race in the top lane. We talked about how far ahead in CS he was compared to Rencar, but on the flip side, on the bottom side on the map, it's the complete opposite side as we see Lucian almost 15 CS above that Caitlyn pickup. Lucian is extremely strong at bullying Caitlyn in the laning phase, and if she isn't able to transition out of that with a, a decent amount of farm or a couple kills under her belt, the mid-game point where Caitlyn starts to taper off is going to be so detrimental to the rest of NID, no matter how fed Aatrox is going to be. If there's no carry in the back lines to siege down these towers, it's going to be all about objective control from TBD's point of view. Got the tier up. As Scuba Chris, actually, he, he figured he's got enough farm at this point to just chase Broken Shard down. Broken Shard very low. And I have a tough uh -oh. time to wait for this one. West Rise. Yeah, West Rice is invisible and winds up coming in to surprise Scuba Chris, jumping through the brushes right there. One more leap on the Scuba Chris. There's a little bit of extra damage and the Bola goes out. Arthlon's going to pick up the kill with a boomerang blade for himself. And Scuba Chris trying to get a little aggressive with the counter jungling. And it bites him in the butt right there. Yeah, I mean, that was just the late collapse. Like, more than anything else, like, he, I mean, he had 1v1 versus Broken Shark, he had that wrapped up. But Westrex was there, and Arthalon came in just in time to throw down the Burmering Blade. And his, I mean, the two lanes, they weren't able to control the, that movement. Westrex, I mean, that was a kill that he pretty, or an assist even, he didn't even get the kill, so it's not that bad. That's an assist that he pretty sorely needed. Yeah, he definitely did, and now we see things, for the time being, getting a little bit... It's calmed down on the map. Aatrox and Rengar is still kind of going head to head in that top lane matchup. And with that assist, like you said, Rengar is going to wind up having a little bit of extra money on his side. We see the culling being used in the bottom lane to just push this wave even further. Because guess what? That's level six is compared to now just a level five hit for that Caitlyn down there. So there's just so much damage and so much harassment going down from this bottom lane of TBD that Brunch and Glee Blarboom or Heal Rin, whatever you want to call him right now, they're having even a hard time just leveling. Hook goes out underneath the tower from Bubba Dub, a box goes down, a flash has to go away from the side of Glee, and Napkins in disguise, they're back against their own tower, but too afraid to turn on that bottom lane aggression. Mid lane, we see Scuba Chris getting knocked up here by Broken Shard, the burnout's pushing the wave, there's some damage being dealt, but Jarvan isn't afraid, it buys time for Rengar to come in from here, Double bolas go out. Nubby Pooh Bear is going to wind up going down to there. No tower to chase away from. They're not going to go after Scuba Chris. And it's falling apart for NID in the early game. West Rise is, is roaming. It's been consistent. Brunch gets hooked. 
Oh man, Brunts gets hooked once again. Bubba Dub winds up getting a lot of damage. The charge forward there from Robert X Lee, but a barrier is gonna come out for Brunch to save his life in that circumstance. Now the jungler's dueling around by this red, but Broken Shard has to flash away. Dragon comes over the wall. Scuba Chris, can he wind up picking up a kill? He gets the red buff for himself, and at the same time across the map, NID's Aatrox from Enox is able to secure that top lane tower. So very quickly, things go in favor of TBD, and NID, they get advantages elsewhere. Exactly. Right, right now, the biggest thing that's going in favor of To Be Determined is the bottom lane. And they, they're going to have to ride that to victory. Robert X Lee is going to have to, to put this team on his shoulders and carry. Arthlon, he's getting a decent amount of farm, but then again, he's also not really shutting down W Pooper all that much. And you do have to be very careful of a Cassidy that gets out of the early game without getting abused. Scuba Chris, he's very strong right now. As you see him chasing down Arthlon, he, he, if he had his ult, he could have picked up that kill. I'm just calling if it right now. If like, he had Arthlon his health, had he could have. Summoners and stuff like that, but honestly, Scuba Chris, I think, could have had that. Uh, but just, you know, the fact that he just used the ultimate to pick up another kill is going to preclude him getting that one. Oh, and we see the Massacre being popped by Enoch. Jumps back in on the West Strikes. Has the Blood Bowl passive available. Ignites go down. The Bullet Strike goes out. Blood Bowl gets popped, but West Strikes is extremely low. So he has to back away to the safety of his tower. Enoch's going to pop himself back up into this one. Get himself a decent amount of farm as across the map we see Broken Shard securing the blue buff for himself. Now going down onto this already very vulnerable bottom side of the map here. We see Broken Shard with Robert and Bubba Dub going to be a three-men strong charge onto this already susceptible bottom tower. We saw that Brunch had to back away. He's farming double golems and Gleam Glarm Gloop. Hyorin is nowhere to be seen. So that's a three-man siege on this outer tower on the bottom side, and it looks like this is where TBD want to apply the pressure. Alright, so Robert actually very carefully lining up that ultimate and using it to arguably its greatest effect here in the early game. It just clears out most of a creep wave all at once. Uh, so they take that one out, and his team will be able to grab this one up. He wants to get in the brush and heal back out. But Brunch, next level mind games, he's already got a snap trap waiting for him. <laughs> well, the calling deals, like you said, 400% damage to minions. I believe that's what it is. 400% sounds about right. So clearing out those waves is extremely quick and effective. And actually, Scuba Chris is a very ballsy play right here. He knows that the enemy bottom lane was there. They did see Lucian recall, however. So NID, they're going to brute force this dragon attempt. The box goes down. Their bottom lane does not have levels. There's no level 6 on Lulu quite yet, but the dragon will secure the dragon with a smite right there as Scuba Chris's Shivana picks up a kill onto the dragon. Cataclysm after the flag and dragon needs are going to sacrifice Lulu for this one, but a global objective for underleveled support, it kind of works out in favor of NID. But Tom, there's a Wriggles Lantern on the Aatrox. Do you realize there's a, this? There's a the Wriggles Lantern on the Aatrox. I'm not, I'm not joking. I, I literally stopped watching that dragon fight when I looked down at the scoreboard and I saw that there's a wriggle Tom. What? Oh, and now he's getting hooked! Well, the Lantern couldn't see that hook coming, so Enox might want to refund that purchase right there as Westrice wanted to pick himself up a kill. Five members strong from TBD barreling down on this mid lane tier 2 tower, and I don't know how many times we talked about it in the previous matchups, but this second tier mid tower is so crucial in map pressure. The oh! dragon gets hooked there from Bubba Dub, says, ah, ah, you're coming back to me. Scuba Chris goes down in that situation, and wow, that was a, that was a ridiculous hook there from Bubba Dub. I don't think he's missed a single one this game. But Ooh, West Rice, uh, I think Lee Glarb was missing his health bar in that situation right there. Rengar just eviscerates the poor level 5 still Lulu as TBD take three kills and a tower for nothing lost on their side. Bubba Dub, I... Wow. Like, what do you even say to that? Scuba Chris, he had the flight plan, he was ready to go, he, like, he was ready for takeoff, and then Bubba Dub just, like, canceled it. Like, he's just up in that, in that control tower, he's just like, nope, 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 you, sir, do not have clearance to live. And just hooked him up, pulled him back in the middle of the team, and down he went. That was incredible placement on the death sentence there, and it allows TBD to take an absolutely massive advantage. We're at the 13-minute mark. This is still very, very early on in the game, and the gold lead right now is 3,500 gold in favor of TBD. They're up two towers right now. They're up six kills as well. And Inox, I mean, a Riggle's Lantern, I have to assume that's an early game investment, and it's not really... I mean, I, I don't think he's necessarily getting paid on it. Like, West Rice has said, okay, I got kind of crushed in the early game. I'm just going to roam around and start killing people. And no one's been able to stop him. And because of that, West Rice has remained incredibly relevant. And in fact, if we check his gold right now, he's 500 gold ahead of Inox. Despite the fact that for a large portion of this game, he could not 1v1 his straight up in lane. And who knows? He might still have a difficult time. Although that Revenant's Hydra is definitely going to help out. 
Ravenous Hydra is going to help with the dual potential, but the Wriggles Lantern, one thing that it does offer against a full AD team is some armor and some pretty effective lifesteal to synergize with Aatrox's kit. So if he does wind up getting into a fight situation, he gets a boost of armor while still getting some beneficial stats that he really wants to have. But in this top lane here, Scooper Chris is trying to set up a gank, but the trap is sprung on NID. Cataclysm goes down, but it locks up Scooper Chris and Enox in the fray. The culling goes down and, well, pops a passive there onto Enox. Now Robert gonna try to pick up a kill for himself. The Dark Blight away and the Lulu ultimate finally level six. Saves Aatrox's life for the time being. Flash forward from Robert X Lee is met with a Glitter Lance right there. So a turnaround fight from TBD. NID don't lose anybody for it, but it's a 5v4 situation and Brunch is still in the middle of the map. Also, that summoner heal. That summoner heal like Leap Larbu definitely ended up saving Scuba Chris's life. It was popped to try to save Anox's life, but it ends up being Scuba Chris who walks away the beneficiary of it, as the Lulu ultimate was enough to get uh, to get the Aatrox out of that one alive. Scuba Chris just barely avoids going down, but to be determined, they have a massive amount of map control right now. They're going to be able to claim themselves another tower for free. They're going to clear out all of the vision on the Baron area, and they know that if at any point they find themselves in a, same, in this, a similar situation, that they could potentially make a play onto this Baron. We see WP Bear doing what Cassidy does best, chasing people down at low health, but he's not going to be able to get anything done here at TBD, TBD. Back away from that one without losing anything, extending their goal lead to 4,000. And so far, this Kassadin has had really no impact on the Summoner's Rift. We talked about the trouble he's going to have in a ranged matchup, let alone one against an AD carry in the mid lane. Sivir is 1-0-3 currently with 105 CS compared to the 90 that Kassadin has been able to secure. And where she has a Bloodthirster already, Nubby Poober hasn't gotten the gold to invest into the item ramp up that he really needs. Tear of the Goddess has been taking away for a little bit, but it's less than halfway charged at this point in the game. And a Catalyst the Protector is not going to be the Rod of AD as he needs to start dishing out some decent amounts of damage. Whereas on the flip side, these AD carries already both completing their Bloodthirsters, as well as that Ravenous Hydra we talked about coming out for Rengar, there's just a massive surge of damage coming out from the side of TBD. NID need to be able to hold on, but with four of their towers already down on the map, and Scuba Chris's jungler not having any CC to make an impact early on, they're really hurting for something right now, Malthus. They're, they've yet to complete a big item. Like, there's the Bloodthirster. That's the first major item that this team has really been able to pick up. The Wriggle Slander is an early game, you know, early game item. Helps you out. It, it will transition into actually being a decent item for him at all stages of the game because, as you mentioned before, that's 25 armor he wasn't going to be able to get from anywhere else. So, you know, that's that's a good pickup against this team. You see a full AD team. Because we were talking about this before the game, right? And we were talking about how Scuba Chris is in, a, in kind of a kick where he loves to farm, so he's picking up champions like Shivana that farm really, really well. And we looked at this team and said, man, if he gets to a phase where he has, like, Sunfire, Cape, Randu, and Zomen, and then can just buy, like, a Thorn Mail, it's going to be really tough for anybody on the side of TBD to, to pick up the kill. But they're playing so patiently, and they're playing with builds that take so much time to ramp up. And in the case of Caitlyn, just got kind of shut down in the bottom lane, that they're not necessarily going to hit that phase of the game. Of course, Scuba Chris, Scuba Chris can actually safely get that much farm without just putting you know either Cassidy or Caitlyn ridiculously far behind and making them completely irrelevant to this game. Uh, like this is a very very scary situation to be in if your napkins in disguise right now But to be determined they do need to maintain this pressure They cannot let up they need to be conscientious of the fact that they are an all AD lineup And that there are some threats for people to get skipped really 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 tanky over on the side of NID well, we are going to see NIT being able to secure a dragon. Maybe the patience coming out from TBD working against them a little bit right there as they're not willing to go into a full-on fight and contest that buff, especially with their AD carry away in that top lane area. And now that NIT have identified that Robert's split pushing away in top lane, this could be their chance to siege down and potentially take down this bottom lane tower. It wouldn't really even things up. It would give them a second tower compared to four from TBD's side, but it will give them a little bit of global gold on top of that dragon that they desperately need. Nubby Pooh Bear Spell Shield goes through. He's not going to deal any damage to Arklon in that mid lane area, trying to defend against an inhibitor tower. And now TBD is using this time to stall to stop NID from going back to defend their crucial base towers being attacked in the mid lane right here. Arklon, though, is going to get slowed out right there by some Void Pulses coming out from W Pooh Bear. A Thresh Express Lantern is going to secure him and keep him alive as they rotate towards the top tier 2 tower. This is going to be trading an outer tower for an inner tower here, as TBD, even though they let up a little crack in the armor, they're able to secure an objective across the map from NID, and one definitely more detrimental to the position on the map. Alright, so Nubby Pooh Bear has finally picked up a Rod of Ages, uh, so that timer is going to start ticking as well. He, I mean, he's got a good power spike incoming. 
if Napkins in Disguise can keep themselves in this game, if they don't give up too much, if they get Nubby Pooper into a point where he, he hits that big power spike when he completes those two items, if they're able to complete two items on the brunch, they'll they'll still be very much in this one. Scuba Chris, we, we mentioned he's got a potential to hit critical mass as he can just get insanely tanky, especially against this lineup. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of things that NID still have going for them going into the late game. They need to stop hemorrhaging objectives. The fact that they picked up that dragon is crucial. It's absolutely crucial, but they need to not let any more towers fall down, and they need to start grabbing a couple towers of their own, because if they can get that global goal going back for them, they'll be in a great spot. We see a duel here between Westrace and Enox, and Enox turned this one around on Rengar. The Massacre comes out, and that's what it's looking like right here. Enox can't seem to find the invisible Rengar right now, but is he going to be able to chase down? A teleport was used by Nubby Pooh Bear as well, so they're splitting up right here, but at the same time, TBD group into the mid lane. They realize that Scuba Chris is all by himself, has to pop the Dragon Farm to get out of there. Enox will find Westrace, but he finds Hyorin. Is he going to wind up going down? He will, but Lulu stays alive with a well-timed whimsy. At the same time, though, Robert takes out one of the only other members on NID that has any kills in Scuba Chris. There is a tank down for a top lane damage dealer right here. As now NID group up in this mid lane. Flash box from Bubba Gump. Enoch still has the blood well passive available. Nubby Pooper gets a crucial kill that he's gonna want on Cassidy. Darkfly over the wall saves Enoch for the time being as he does aggro the wolves to try to life steal himself up a little bit to survive. Now it's three members strong from TBD in the mid lane against only two members from the side of NID. Not so strong, especially in levels. That inhibitor tower is gonna wind up going down. And unfortunately, like you said, Malthus, NID are taking small victories but still hemorrhaging these objectives yeah, this, this is the big story right now is these objectives you saw Bubba Dub was very very close to landing that hook because he didn't he still was so confident that his team was far enough ahead that even if they don't get that like super ideal death sentence initiation he felt that they would win the fight anyway so he went with the flash play dropped the box he ended up going down but because they were able to apply so much pressure and push so many people back, they were able to take that tower for themselves. Now we see the side of Napkins in the Skies group back up. They want to get this tower back. They, they desperately, desperately need it. Looks like they will get it. Ooh, casting and winds up rift walking in onto Robert X Lee. Gets the Lulu wild growth as well. Nubby Puma's taking a lot of damage. His team hasn't finished the tower yet. The culling comes out and that dissuades NID from chasing down after the tower goes away. Now it's them trying to run away from this situation right here as TBD are on the chase. Ooh. Now they're on the hunt as Super Pops the ultimate. The tormented blades go out. Enoch's gonna have to walk away from this one. We see a flash away from Glee Glogwoo. They go back in. Nubby Puma just melts like he's made a paper in that situation. Two more from NID go down, and I don't know who made that call, but I think it was a death sentence right there, even without Thresh hooking anybody. Triple kill for Robert X Lee. The inhibitor goes down, and the only one left to defend is Scuba Chris. That Scuba Chris is—I mean, he's—he's he's gonna go for the open. He's gonna try to keep this one up. He Lee. picks up the kill on the Bubba Dub. He gets a kill on Bubba Dub. Low health bars from the side of TBD mean they won't be able to finish this game, but a dragon form has been popped, and all in all, it's a four for one trade, and that's after a tower. So they get the tower, they lose four members of their team in an awkward turnaround right there, and then they lose the inhibitor. NID, they just kind of seem like their mind is elsewhere. Right now, all right, I think it kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier on in the game. Scuba Chris's jungling style has been to facilitate his lanes and help them get ahead. He did do that for Enox in the top lane with a well-timed gank, but he took the kill. He has 98 farm compared to the 60 from Broken Shard, and he has three out of the five kills for his team. He's definitely in that farm-centric mindset, but the rest of his team isn't able to survive to that point. They have a Caitlyn that they picked into a Lucian lane, and she hasn't been able to scale up in itemization, let alone get any safe farm or levels for herself. Kassadin was in a very disadvantageous matchup in the mid lane, so everywhere on the map wound up losing systematically. So even though Scuba Chris looks like he's getting big right now, he can't 1v5. I want to go back to what made that go so wrong for Napkins in Disguise. And basically what it comes down to is Nubby Pooh Bear either... Maybe it was one of those situations where like... Alright, have you ever had, I don't know, like something really important to you? It was sitting on a desk, and then you... Like, you felt your hand hit it in, in, like, your mind's eye, even before you actually saw it. Your mind's eye saw that item falling down. And then Ox is going to go in on a Bubba Dub. 
Ooh, Inox does want to go down on the Thresh right here. The remaining members from each team are collapsing in right now. Nubby Pooh Bear is going to pick up a kill on the Bubba Dub right there. That's a second one for Cassidy. And that's going to start the ramp up for that very mobile AP Assassin. Now, Scuba Chris pops the on the hunt from Arthalon. So they turn around TBD. They're kind of collecting themselves mentally. And now that they're moving around as a group, they're getting kills onto the targets that need them. The only person that hasn't gotten anything going for himself quite yet is poor old Brunch with just his Bloodthirster. Oh, Broken Shard. He wants to try to cancel as many of these bases as he can. Not going to be able to get anything done here. And West Rice is going to have to pull off on the split push down the bottom lane. But uh, it's like, okay, where I was going with that is, right, like you feel your hand hit it, and then you recognize what's happening, and you know it's too late to stop it, and you just have to watch it, like, horrifically crash and end really horribly for you. That's what happened with that riff walk for Nubby Pooh Bear. He started that riff walk and then said, oh, Death Sentence is being channeled. He got hooked immediately, and he just died without doing anything else. And now he's the one running the charge, and we'll be able to push him off his Baron. Yeah, just because Brunch used that ace in the hole, all of a sudden TBD realized that they didn't clear out all the vision in that Baron pit area, and they have to back away. Ardlon actually throws out the Boomerang Blade, and he doesn't quite steal the blue buff away, but he does make NID think twice about continuing to pressure down onto the enemy side of the map. So now with a little bit of breathing room, let's recap a little bit here. It's 13 kills compared to 6 in favor of TBD, and they have super minions streaming down the middle of the map right now. 38.2k and 7 towers compared to 33.7 and 3 towers. NID have been able to pick themselves up a couple dragons to stay in this game, but the gold counts are drifting further and further apart in these solo lane matchups. We have, of course, Arthalon, who's already got his Bloodthirster in Last Whisper, Pair that with Robert Lee, who's gotten his own last uh, last whisper of Bloodthirster, and has already picked up the zeal on top of that. And you talked about in Champion Select here, uh, Malthus, the last whispers getting built up quicker than the armor from Scuba Chris could be something that is extremely detrimental for NID. This is, I mean, that's what it's going to come down to. This is, it, I mean, you see an all AD lineup, and you recognize, you know what, this is going to be the League of Last Whisper. I get every, everyone's. I mean, everyone's gonna have to buy one because the defensive itemization is going to be armor, armor, and then more armor. You look at Enox right now; he's got four items. Three of them grant him armor. Like this is this is what the situation is going to be. They they know they're gonna have to mitigate this, one. so they buy the last whispers immediately off the bat, so that they never hit that phase with like, oh, they have too much armor. I need to buy last whisper in order to actually get through some of this damage right now. See so a bone tooth necklace as well getting picked up here from Westray. So if he's able to continue roaming around and picking up all these free kills, or even just grab up a couple of assists. Uh, he's he's gonna be pretty darn terrifying on this one, but to be determined. You know they're just coming in with the slow push. They're using the four one split push again. This is classic TBD. They love putting West Rice off on his own, and the rest of the team groups up and just pushes down a side lane. Well, it's going to be up to Enox to stop West Rice because NID have had some four one split push practice of their own. However, because he's on Aatrox. You normally want to build up towards that Blade of the Rune King, which he has gotten the build one a Cutlass for. And actually, Scuba Chris going in over the wall. He spies a, a random Arthalon that he wants to try to go on, but unfortunately, now following up from the rest of his team over that wall, there are too many members from TBD on that side of the map. Now the Dragon Form is actually down, so that's going to be an initiation method down for the side of NID, and they have a couple Super Minions left on the side of TBD to try to siege down this mid lane inhibitor. Is it going to be enough, though? Is this a decent amount of wave clear coming out from Scuba Chris and Enox, and it looks like Broken Shard wants to fight. A play and a box go down from Bubba Dub. He does wind up hooking onto Aatrox right here. We already have Brunch going down the back lines to a wild West Race. Enox dropping down extremely low. Bloodwell is not available. It's a double kill for West Race. Nubby Pooh Bear is going to be the next one to fall. Bubba Dub gets that one. Cataclysm is still available as Broken Shard uses that one and forces the flash away from the rest of NID. Inhibitor goes down. Three members of NID are down, and TBD are turning onto the Nexus Towers. They're looking like they want to end this game right now. Scuba Chris and Hyorin trying to defend as much as possible. Oh, Lulu barely gets back to the fountain in time for Westrace not to wind up picking up another kill. But the GG's come out, Malthus, and TBD too strong for NID in this one. Secure themselves a third place in the Ancient Golem Conference for the time being. Napkins in disguise, I'm kind of looking at this right now, and I never looked at it this way before, but I feel like they ended up picking kind of a greedy team composition, like when it really comes down to it. And I mean that in this, it's not so much like, oh, this is just a super, super late game team comp that doesn't do anything early. I don't mean that. I mean that this team composition is a win more comp. It's not a, if, if you fall behind, it's very difficult to get a lot done with a lot of these champions. Like, Shivana, Aatrox, Kassan, these are guys that don't necessarily do all that well if they fall behind. And while, you know, they had a relatively strong start, 
Like we saw situations where Scuba Chris was running in the jungle and just chasing down Broken Shard. They tried to abuse that power in ways that they couldn't viably do. And so that like in that example, Scuba Chris goes in, tries to bully out Broken Shard 1v1, but then he has to deal with the fact that West Rice and Arthalon collapse and they pick up that kill. You know, Aatrox was able to get out really far ahead of West Rice early on. West Rice very wisely just avoids that lane, roams around, picks up some kills across the map, and is able to get himself right back in the game that way. And once they fell into that situation where they couldn't just use either Aatrox or Shivana to split push really hard and, excuse me, ward up the map and use Kassadin to roam around and pick up kills on people who are in transition to try to shut down that split push while using Caitlyn and Lulu to just kind of take down as many towers as possible and push lanes, they kind of hit this this phase of the game where it was like, okay, well, what do we really do? And that that frustration ends up is, is evidence in things like Scuba Chris ulting over walls to try to make things happen when the team isn't really there to support him. Like there was just there were so many plays where you could see them trying to make something happen. They tried to aggressively go in for fights and try to try, just try to do something, and they couldn't. Co- they, there was no cohesion between the team. They couldn't make anything happen. Well, like we said before, it was the fact that their lanes besides Aatrox wound up falling behind so early on. The Lucian pick against Caitlyn, while the Caitlyn pick into the Lucian pick, definitely showing as to why Lucian's rise of popularity and Caitlyn's small decline, although she's still very popular, you know, her, win, her win success just hasn't been as high. And while Lucian's making a big statement for himself, not only here in the NACL, but I've seen him used across the board. We saw him in NEST over in China, and we've seen him picking up steam even in the GPL. So this Lucian pickup, guys, the culling might not deal as much damage as you think it will do, but it definitely, definitely condemns Caitlyn Lanes, guys. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. Of course, while the music is playing, 